Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. So you may have noticed that your portfolio might be looking a little bit sad lately if you are more geared towards tech stocks. At least my portfolio is looking a little bit sad. Sadly, stonks don't always go up and we kind of all knew this was going to happen eventually. So I wanted to do a video about why this is happening and what I'm personally doing to try to mitigate this. So first, let's get into why this is happening. So essentially, six cyclical rotation is starting to happen, which means that the tech stocks which are way overvalued are starting to come back down to earth. And some of the more cyclical stocks which have been impacted quite a lot due to the illness such as banks and travel are starting to get a bit of a rally again. Bond yields are starting to rise as well and potentially interest rates might rise as well. And even though I think we all know that the stock market does go through highs and lows, it still kind of sucks when it does happen. Why? <laughs> But on the bright side, this actually is kind of a good thing because it does indicate that investors are looking quite optimistic about our future because when there is investor optimism, bond yields tend to rise and some of the more cyclical stocks also tend to rise as well. So here's how I'm going to manage and invest my money during this market correction. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to invest my life savings into the like button to help support the most disruptive YouTube channel of our generation. And you can invest in it too by tapping the like button down below. I'm just kidding, but here's how I'm actually managing my money during this cyclical rotation. And by the way, I'm not a financial advisor or a professional investor. These are just things that I'm personally going to do based on my own experience. So the first thing that I'm doing is actually something that I'm not doing, and that is I'm not selling my stocks. So I've been investing in the stock market for about five years. And in that five year period, the one thing that I have learned is I shouldn't sell my stocks. So I actually sold pretty much most of my portfolio in order to purchase my first home, which is this apartment. And if I held on to that stock market portfolio, it would have had some amazing gains today. For example, I sold Slack at a 20% loss because I bought it at the IPO. And if I held on to it, I would be up 10% today, 545% on Afterpay and 711% on zip. So I'm going to hold on to them for as long as possible because I do have high convictions for the stocks that I have bought. So the second thing that I'm doing is I'm going to stick to my investing strategy. I know that there are a lot of people that say that there will be another stock market crash and there will be blood on the streets, but personally, something that I have learned is it's really important to try to block out all of the noise and just stick to your own investing strategy. At least that's something that has definitely worked for me because nobody really has a crystal ball. There could be a stock market crash, but nobody really knows when it's going to happen. And I can't really control a stock market crash, but I can control what I do with my investing and my investing strategy. So I'm just going to keep on with my investing strategy. And that is to dollar cost average into my ETFs, which is making periodic investments into my ETFs pretty much every month. I'll also be buying individual stocks in my circle of competence when they do start to come into a good price range. And I will just keep on executing on that strategy, no matter what the stock market looks like. So the third thing that I may do is I may actually partially fix my interest rate for my mortgage. So according to the governor of the Reserve Bank of Australia, there aren't going to be any official interest rate cuts in Australia. However, some economists are predicting that there could be some interest rate rises in mortgages this year because of the rise in inflation and also businesses starting to pick up again. So if the interest rates do rise this year, then I may look at partially fixing my interest rate so that I can lock in a pretty low interest rate. And I am looking for an investment property. So if I do get an investment property, I am probably going to get a fixed interest rate rather than a variable interest rate. Of course, there are pros and cons to fixed interest rates and variable interest rates. Variable interest rates does make it a lot more flexible for you to switch the mortgage lenders and fixed interest rates do fix you on for a certain number of months to a particular bank. 
but I think it is more ideal for me because the interest rates are quite low at the moment and I do want to lock in a low interest rate for the future. So that is my strategy on how I will be investing and managing my money during this market correction. And I would love to know what you guys are doing down in the comments below. Are you doing something similar to me? Are you doing something different? I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And if you'd like to see some more videos, I've got some links to some videos here. So click on the links and click through to another video.